So if you're the type of player that is secretly praying that your jump shot goes in every time you encounter this situation in my career, this video is the right video for you to become the best shooter possible. Now this footage will focus on offline because in order to be great online, you need to understand the fundamentals in an offline setting. I'll give you the reasons why you're struggling, what the important systems are to consider, and what are the essential tips you need in order to become the best shooter in NBA 2K24. So all of this footage is captured in Hall of Fame difficulty where it's pretty strict. It's either you green the shot or you don't. And speaking of green or miss, so first thing you want to understand is whether you want to use the jump shot meter on or off. So to shoot in NBA 2K24, just hold square, wait for the meter to fill up to that green portion and then release square again. Obviously, players who are rated low in certain aspects of shooting will have a smaller green window making it tougher to hit certain shots. So why your hot zones or cold zones matter is because if you're shooting from a hot zone, you will get a marginal boost to your shooting. Now visually, it's very difficult to see in the shot meter, but trust me, it's there, especially in lower difficulties, it will matter. All right, in NBA 2K24, your jump shot visual cues are essentially your jump shot timing speed. So jump is very early, set point is early, push is default or normal, and release is the very late release. So essentially the jump or very early release cue is when your player jumps off the floor. Set point is when he sets the ball just above his forehead. Push is when you're about to push the ball into a releasing motion. And release is essentially when you are about to release the jump shot. So for the Steph Curry jump shot, for example, the difference between jump and release is about 8 frames. So it's about a 15% difference in release speed. So for me, there's nothing that's the best or the one that I would recommend. Just try them out and see what you're most comfortable with and make sure that it matches up visually with how your player shoots. So I personally use the push setting. And another thing that you may want to consider is removing the shot meter when you're shooting the ball. It provides a significant boost over shooting with the shot meter. And this means that you'll have to pay attention to the visual cues of your jump shot. For me, I'm not even looking at the ball. I'm looking at the, the position of my player's body. Once his body straightens out, that's when I know I have to shoot. And one big mistake that players make is that they rely on muscle memory instead of you looking at your player's visual cue when shooting their shot. And that's a big mistake because your visual cues will actually change depending on certain situations. For example, depending on the extent of your catch. For example, that right there, I use muscle memory instead of looking at my visual cue. But there are certain load ups and certain animations that will either slow you down or speed you up. Off the dribble is another example. Take a look at this situation right here. My body actually turns a little bit after my dribble motion and I will have to wait a little bit in order to release the shot. So these things are important to consider. And of course, you'll have to understand your different jump shot visual cues when you are executing your different skill shots, such as your spin jumpers and your step back jumpers. Those will have different visual cues that you need to understand. And of course, these are also affected by your jump shot release cue visual setting. So again, these, these emphasize really the need to practice, the need to be comfortable with the specific setting you choose, and just put the time in to work on your jump shot. Why I also advocate for not using the shot meter is that honestly, in certain situations, it can be distracting. Take a look at this situation right here where I go from an open jump shot to a contested, you saw the green window fluctuate, and sometimes that can be very distracting versus a situation right here where I don't have a shot meter. I'm just able to focus on my specific visual cue. Okay, now in a setting where everything is right. If you are wide open, you have zero adrenaline loss and there's no fatigue, look at the size of that green window. The green window for your shot will be very big. Now the green window will shrink regardless of your badges and ratings the farther you are from the basket. But if you find yourself in a situation where you miss too many jumpers and you see that blue ring around you or you're representing that you are cold, your jump shot green window will also decrease. But I think an underrated feature of 2K24 that not many people realize is that if you lose your adrenaline bars, which are lost anytime you're not able to get past your defender, your jump shot success will decrease significantly. That was an open shot, a wide open shot, but the green window was basically non-existent. So this gives you the importance of making sure that you efficiently blow past your defender. Losing all that adrenaline will cost you a lot of success. 
Compare that to this situation right here, full adrenaline bars, minimal loss in stamina, and I'm able to green that with a big window. The next important thing is understanding your different jump shot ratings. So release height and release speed are self-explanatory. Faster release at a higher height makes it way more difficult to block. Take a look at the situation right here. Patty Mills isn't able to block my shot because of that high release, the height of that release and the speed of that release. Jump shots with higher defensive immunity grade will be less affected by shot contests, whereas timing stability will make you less vulnerable to changes in jump shot timing, which are affected by the defense and also your fatigue. All right, let's go back to that clip where we hit that step back jumper over use of Nurkic. As you can see right here, without the contest, that green window is pretty large. But as Nurkic was able to recover and contest, that green window shrunk significantly. The green window was still there, but it's a difficult shot to make. But I have a Steph Curry jumper in my my player, which basically means defensive immunity and timing stability are very high. And I have the confidence to raise up for these difficult buckets. That 23% shot contest could have been higher if because of his shot grade. So I'm able to hit these types of shots with confidence, knowing that my jump shot can counter defenses to a certain extent you still want to take open shots as much as possible but the jump shot ratings are important specifically for those reasons your release height and your release speed will make you less blockable and then your timing stability and defensive impact will make you less vulnerable to shot contests now that doesn't mean i'm advocating that you take bad shots as you can see right here i set up my shots really well and understand how the contest system works okay the next thing you want to understand is if your stamina is blinking red you're pounding that rock too much it will make your green window basically non-existent so even using steph curry this wide open shot right here as you can see his step back jumper wasn't affected too much by fatigue that's the timing stability but the green window is basically gone if you're blinking red so be efficient with your energy and people will tell you basically one of two things they have the jump shot it will make you a money shooter and while that may be true i think in order to become a money shooter in nba 2k24 is basically to hit the gym this left spot of the floor going into my step backs is one of my problem spots Steph Curry has a trap step back here. There are two different types of step backs going to his left. And they have vastly different visual release cues. So what I do is I use my game speed combos, my actual combos that I use in game, and keep trying to hit these shots, mixing up the different animations so I'm not caught off guard. And as you can see, this translates really well into in-game footage right here. I mean, this is offline gameplay, but again, in order to be good online, you need to be great offline. And I'm hitting these shots at will because I put the time in. So I then practice all my different combos, go into my different shot types, my step backs, my pull-ups, my spin jumpers, all the shots that I want to hit in an online setting. The work you put in offline is going to translate online and there are certain things that in an online setting you can't really control for latency for example i'll cover that in a future video as i'm going to go online in a few days to try out my build but trust me put the time in in a practice setting make sure that the shots you take in a game setting that you are very comfortable with and that's me putting the time in as you can see right here Another thing that I don't cover too much in this video is to understand who you are as a player. Are your ratings high enough to be taking certain shots? Do you have the badges grinded out? As you can see here, the badges are going to be an important part of whether you're able to make a shot or not. Having badges like Dead Eye and Blinders are going to be important for you to take those highly contested shots. Guard Up is another underrated badge. Green machine and open looks are badges that will amplify your ability to make shots. Understand the badge system, understand your attributes, and understand which moves you are good with in order to be the most successful shot creator and shooter in NBA 2K24. So there you have it, all the fundamentals to shooting that not a lot of people take the time to understand and take advantage of. If you take these things into consideration, the next time you step on the court, trust me, you'll gain more success. The biggest tip I can give you is just practice, man. Put the time in and practice, and trust me, the results will speak for themselves.